Spam Tiny is our mail filtering product, offering you advanced spam protection by blocking spam, viruses, malware, ransomware, and links to malicious websites from your emails. Today, I'll be walking through the steps to get you set up on Spam Titan to start protecting your domains. There will be six steps altogether, so let's get started. You should have received an email from your account manager containing account details, login credentials, IP addresses, and MX records. This email is necessary to get you started with Spam Titan and to allow it to start filtering your email. Retrieve the link from your new Spam Titan account and use your login details to access it. Now I'm logged in, the first thing I'm going to do is update my password. To do this, I'm going to click on the profile icon and I'm going to go to security. Here, it's going to open up a new page where I can generate a new password. I'm going to enter in that new password into these fields here. And I'm going to click Save Changes. This will now log me out of my account, so I must log back in with the new password. Now that is complete, I'm going to move on to the first step, which is adding a domain. For Spam Titan to accept email for a domain and filter it, that domain must first be added to Spam Titan. To add a domain, I'm going to do this from my overview page, which is the default page that is shown when I log in. Here, I'm going to scroll down and click Add Domain. And I'm going to fill in these details in relation to my domain I want filtered by Spam Titan. First, I'm going to enter the domain name. And next, I'm going to fill in the destination server. The destination server is the name of the mail server Spam Titan will be sending your email to once we have analysed it. For example, if you are using Office 365 as your mail server, then the syntax is always the same. It will be your domain dash com dot outlook mail apologies mail dot protection dot outlook dot com the port by default is 25 and this is the port mail is transferred on so let's keep it the same all the settings here are you have the ability to toggle between on or off so let's go through them one by one. MX Lookup is in reference to outbound mail filtering, which we will not be doing, so let's leave that off. RBL Checks is in reference to public blacklists. When this is enabled, we check these public blacklists for the sending IP. If the sending IP is on a blacklist, this means they are a known spammer, so we will block email from them. This is an important check, so let's leave this on. SPF checks, this protects your domains from spoofed emails, meaning we will block mails where someone is pretending to be someone that they're not and trying to send you an email. This is also an important check, so let's leave this on too. Grey listing is a technique we use to block spam. We look for what we call a triplet, which is referencing the sending IP, sending domain and recipient domain. If these three have ever been seen together before, then we will temporarily defer the mail. Spammers will not resend this mail, but legit senders will always resend it. This is a great tool for blocking generic spam and marketing mail. However, when first enabling it, we can see a delay in receiving email. In this case, we recommend this off for a few days until you are happy using the filter then re-enabling this later on. Recipient verification is a reference to valid email boxes on your mail server. If someone is trying to send a mail to a mailbox that does not exist, we will reject this attempt. 
If you are using Office 365 as your mail server, then you can choose Dynamic Recipient Verification. This type is also supported on Exchange and most Unix-based mail servers. The other options you also have here are LDAP, list, meaning you can specify a, a list of valid mailbox on your mail server, or a regular expression, meaning you can configure a regular expression for all your mailboxes. Again, here we recommend to finish your testing to ensure mail is flowing fine before enabling this. Once you've reviewed all of these settings and you're happy with them, you can click Add Domain and add the domain to the system. Once you've added your domain, a new page for configuration will appear. What we want to do next is test the connectivity between the spam time and the destination server that we entered. To do this, I'm going to click on Domain Configuration under the domain we entered. On this page, find the button Send Test Email, which will be at the bottom, and click on it. On the pop-up window, enter in an email address that exists on this domain and that you have access to to check. And once you have entered your email, click send and we will send a test email to you. Once you've done that, go check your email and check to see if we've received that email. I'm going to open up my email here. Here I can see the test email come from Spam Titan, showing it's connected successfully. If you did not receive this email, make sure you are not currently using any mail filtering service that have, may have blocked it. Also ensure if you have any connectors in place that the mail will be rejected if you are only accepting mail from these IPs. So look into disabling these connectors while you test with Spam Titan. Now we have successfully connected the Spam Titan to our mail server, we can proceed with the next setup step. We have added our domain to the Spam Titan system. So let's review the policy associated with the domain. I'm going to go to policies on the left hand side. Notice how I am in a specific domain setting here. Since I was in the domain configuration page, if I want to go to all domain policies, I can click this drop down menu on the top left hand corner and click all domains. Now, when I go to policies, I'll be shown all the domain policies available to me to edit. To edit the domain policy, I'm just going to click on the edit button under the actions under the domain that I've just added. This will open up the domain policy and let's go through all the different settings we have available to look through. First, let's go to spam filtering. Here we have mark as spam when score is greater than and a text box to enter in a number. This is what the threshold is for mail before it is considered a spam. Default setting is five, but this can be adjusted accordingly. Spam should be. This is what we should do with a mail once it's actually marked as spam. There are three available options. The default and recommended value is quarantine, meaning the mail will be held in quarantine. Passed and tag. Spam is passed along to the recipient's inbox, but it is tagged as spam. This does not block the address, nor does it add to the allow list. So this is recommended with caution. And finally, reject. If a mail is marked as spam, this permanently gets rejected from the spam time. We do not recommend the mails uh, using this as the mails are not recoverable. Discard spam scoring set above. Any messages that scores above this is automatically rejected, meaning the mail will be removed from the system. The default is set to 999, but this can be adjusted by the admin. You then also have a send NDR checkbox. If checked on, delivery status notifications is generated for any email that is quarantined. We recommend leaving this off as when enabled can cause backscatter leading to a blacklisted IP. 
add XSpam headers to non-spam emails. When enabled, this adds additional headers to the email that give the result of spam analysis. Only added to inbound messages. These are your spam filtering settings. I recommend leaving all of these set to the default. Let's move down to virus filtering. This will scan emails for any viruses that you have that have been sent. You have the same option here as spam filtering for in terms of what will be done with emails once a virus has been found. Quarantined, pass or tag or rejected. Quarantined again is the recommended value. You can also enable sandboxing to store the virus emails for further analysis. I'd also recommend leaving this on. Attachment type filtering, again, a recommended option to leave on. And again, you have the same options as the spam, quarantined, pass or tagged, or rejected. This will analyze emails for specific types of attachments. You can here in the filtering area, also specify what attachments to block and what attachments to allow. Based on that list, we'll either quarantine, pass or tag, or reject the email. Quarantine report. This is a report that gets sent out to all your users, containing a list of all emails that Spamdyne has blocked for that user. We highly recommend enabling the setting for your users to allow them to access mails that have been blocked if they do need to. This is also a good demonstration of all the good work Spam Titan is doing to block spam emails for you. If you click enable on this feature, you'll see more settings. You can set the frequency of the report. The recommended is daily. You can also set what the report contains. I always recommend all items, all new items since last report meaning you're only receiving the new items and not all items in the quarantine. You can select the language of the report. And then finally, the exclude spam mails scoring above, meaning any mails that score above this figure will not be included on the quarantine report. You can set this to run maximum once per day for audio users, but you do have the ability to manually push out a report under the reporting tabs here. There's a section called On Demand. And all your users also have the ability to request a report in the link from the previous report. The final setting is Archiving. This stores all clean email from the last seven days in the quarantine. And this setting is completely your decision if you want to enable this. Once you're happy with all these settings, let's click Save Changes at the bottom of the page. Once you've saved the domain policy, all your settings within your SpamTitan account has been now set. We only have two steps left. The next step is changing your MX records. What this means is that now all mail will be directed to your SpamTitan account. You may need your domain administrator's help with this if you are unsure where your MX records are hosted. To change over your MX records, you will need to go to your hosting provider of your DNS records, for example, like Office 365 or GoDaddy are two very common ones. Let's go and review the email that came from our account manager. In this email, you will see two MX records listed. We are going to take note of these as these are the MX records we will be changing to. In your hosting provider, you want to add new records, which are two records in the email. And you're going to give these two records equal priority of the highest value, which is zero. For your existing MX records, you're going to edit this to give it the priority of 10, meaning all mail will fail over to your old MX record if there is a mail delivery failure with spam time. We recommend observing this change and ensure mail is flowing through spam time correctly for 24 hours. After 24 hours, this is when you can move to the final step.
From here, I'm going to choose Spam Titan 9 Plus, and I'm going to go to Documentation. Here, I'm going to go to Customer Setup. I'm going to choose Option 7, which is Lock Down Your Mail Server. Once the old MX record has been removed, and you're, not only, you're now only using the Spam Titan MX record, we're going to set up a connector, and this is what locking down your mail server means. These are the instructions you're going to follow. First, you're going to log in to your Office 365 Exchange Admin Center. Next, you're going to go to Mailflow, and then Connectors from the sidebar menu. You're going to then click Add a Connector, and select Partner Organization. Once you do this, the Connection To section will be greyed out because you're going to send it to Office 365. Select Next on the Connector Name window displays. And in the next field, give the connector a name, for example, Spam Titan to Office 365 or Spam Titan is just fine. In the Authenticating window, we're going to then select by verifying the sending domain matches one of the following domains. And in here, you're going to enter in a wildcard or an asterisk into this text box. Once entered in here, you're going to click that plus button. Once added, click next and it will bring you to a security restrictions window. Select reject email messages if they aren't sent over TLS and also reject email messages if they aren't sent from within this IP range. Now in this text box here, where it says for you to specify the IP range, you're going to add the five IP addresses that were sent to us in your email from your account manager. These ones here. You will need to add these one by one and use the plus button after adding each one in the text box. Once that is done, you're going to review the connector. And once you're happy, you're going to click Create Connector. Once that is the case, the connector is now live.